Hello everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we are going to finish our nameplate page in Imagimorphia. Here we are. I still have my post-it note with all my colours down here because uh, I've got memory like a sieve. So today we're going to tackle our pink corners. We are going to fill in any of these little background spaces that are left and then we are going to put our name in the middle. A quick recap on the purples that we used. Again, this is so that if we need to blend in between the purple and the pink, we can do so. So very quick recap of those. Lavender PC934. Parma Violet PC1008. Imperial Violet PC1007. And Dahlia Purple PC1009. And for our pinks, again, I did the same sort of thing. I tried to pick out one with at least a, a purple tone to it, um, but I wanted them to be quite sort of bright and sort of cheery. <laughs> so the colours that we've got for our pink sections is Mulberry, which is PC995. Blush Pink, PC928. Get that to focus, there we go. Pink. PC929 and finally Hot Pink PC993. So that is what we are going to be working with today. I'm going to start up in this top corner today. So exactly the same process as before, trying to avoid any sort of areas where we're going to have the same colour side by side, which is why we've picked four pencils, but any more than four and things start to get a bit crazy if you're trying to you know remember for blending and stuff so force fine now the problem with this corner is i'm not quite sure <laughs> about what a lot of this is you know there, there's quite a lot of things going on but nothing seems to be entire so i'm going to start with our, our birdie friend here and hopefully that will uh be a a good place to start we'll soon find out won't we <laughs> i'm quite excited about finishing this today it's actually been, it's been a lot quicker than I thought it would. A lot of these nameplate pages do take a while and um, the Hannah Carlson one that we did last was, you know, it took us quite a while. So um, I'm, it's kind of nice that this one goes a little bit quicker. And I mean, five parts to, uh, you know, any sort of coloured along or chatorial is, is quite a lot. So, um, but it is one of the shorter ones. It's really nice that a lot of you have said that you'll take this idea and use it in your colouring pages. I really like that. That's that's kind of the aim of the game with this. I don't actually expect that a lot of people will follow on directly and, you know, do everything to the letter as I'm doing on this on this page. But it's nice that uh, it's given people inspiration to go on and, and use these things elsewhere. It looks like a flower in there, like the stem of a flower, perhaps. Oh, we've got some crumbly bits. <laughs> I'm actually not too fussy on what's going on here in terms of shading and things because it is right in the corners it's not really um i don't want to say it's not a big deal but it's just not as noticeable in amongst everything else it's not as to say that it's not important but it, i think as well some of the some of the images and things they they feel a bit more cramped and I don't know whether it is because they are in this sort of tight corner and Kirby has maybe tried to, to squish in as, as much as he can in this area. But yeah, everything just feels a bit tight. So I don't know what this just looks like, some sort of shape to me. I can't really discern what it may be. There's just a lot of lines and stuff going on. I just realised I've missed a bit in there. That looks like it belongs to that shape. We'll go with that. All shall be well. Pop that in there as well, that'll be okay. In these sort of tight spaces in here, I'm just going to treat them as, as like a sort of, like the background area. 
kind of like where we had gaps down here because there's absolutely no way of telling what, what it actually is that's, that's been drawn out. So I think that's probably the best option at this juncture. Again, in behind here, I don't know what this is. I think as well, perhaps, that these sort of outer parts, Kirby would have had a full drawing that had a, like a proper end point and it's perhaps been cropped down just to fit into the, you know, the shape of the pages. That's quite possible as well. I'm only speculating on that, of course, but there is every possibility that that may, may have been the case. There's just so many odd little parts in here. There we go, that's a leaf. That's definitely a leaf. <laughs> Finally, something that we know what it is. I think that's kind of half the fun with Kirby's books, though, It's trying to sort of figure out what things are. It's a bit like down the bottom here with my, my sea anemone stroke rope. <laughs> it could be whatever you want it to be. I really like this colour. It's a colour I don't use nearly often enough, the mulberry. It's quite a vibrant colour. It's quite a cheery colour as well. I would actually say, I don't know, I suppose it depends on your eye, but I would say that's verging very much into, into purple, albeit a pinky purple. But it's still more pink than purple, I think. Again, we've got these all these lines in the background here. I don't know what you are. <laughs> right into this corner up here. I actually have nothing exciting uh, to report in terms of my everyday. I know I normally chat about you know, things that are going on in the farm or sometimes I get myself into a wee ramble about something, but I really don't have anything that exciting to talk about. I did participate in the the Hannah Carlson um, colouring project that has been organised by Becky's Colour Escape and essentially what's happening is that there was a, a group of live streamers that got together and they each took one of Hannah Carlson's books. And the idea is that we come together as a colouring community and we complete these books. So what happened there was that each individual YouTuber had a live stream with their designated book. And they flipped through the book and called out the page numbers and everyone in the chat had the opportunity to claim a page. So the idea is that everyone that claimed a page finishes the page and emails it over to the live streamer before a deadline. And that is so that they can put together like a slideshow. So it will be like a flip through and it will look like the finished book, but every page will be completed by a different colorist so I thought that was a really really good idea so I decided to jump in to Becky's stream and also to Honor's stream as well and uh, I have a page I have the nameplate page uh, in I think it's Summer Nights yeah I've got the nameplate page in Summer Nights which I really wanted because obviously we're doing we're doing nameplates this this is the this is one of my challenges to myself for 2019 was to complete all my nameplate pages. So that worked out really well. I've managed to get that one. But I've also got a page in Magical Dawn as well. And I took that just because Magical Dawn is my favourite Hannah Carlson book. So our next nameplate page, I didn't really want to go back to Hannah Carlson so soon after having just completed the last one. But for the purposes and um, of the, the challenge and also to join in, I decided that that will be the next one. So Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. If you have that book, you can certainly come and colour along with me. Now, because we are on a deadline for for completing that, I will be colouring in that book 
for the next few colouring videos. Some of you will notice that I do try and stagger my videos so that, you know, there's one art one, then one colouring one, and then one that maybe does, you know, does it for everybody kind of thing. Um, so if you are a colourist and you only watch colouring videos, our, our next sort of instalment of colouring videos uh, will be in that book. And it's just so that I can get it finished in time and everybody's happy so that's going to be really good fun i'm really looking forward to that i think the page in magical dawn i will just call it in my own time but we have loads of time we have until the end of july so if, from when this video goes out i'll still have more or less uh, a, an entire month which is good so yeah that's going to be good fun looking forward to that okay there's our little pinky corner done let's move down here now come down to this one down here so that, that was that was really good fun. It was quite interesting though because Becky did hers first because she was the sort of brainchild of it all. So she went first uh, and her live stream was first and it, she had so many mods in the chat obviously because she needed people to help her to keep track of who was shouting out for what page and making sure the person that shouted out first definitely got it. So it, there was a little bit of chaos to begin with but... It was uh, it was good fun once it got going, um, and I was kind of like I was I wasn't saying I wasn't paying attention, but I didn't have to pay attention so closely because my page was right at the start of her stream, so I I could just like sit back and relax and watch everyone else trying to get pages. It was really funny, but it actually worked quite well in the end up, and all the girls did really really well in their streams, getting everybody sorted out, and the mods were just amazing. So if any of you are watching, a massive shout out to the mods because that was exceptional uh you were so organized you guys and you were so on the ball uh, so that was hard work i know that was hard work for you but you did great live streaming is something that i would love to do uh i think i would do like just a kind of chilled out let's sit and drink tea and 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 you know have a chat with you guys excuse me while i have a sip of my tea but unfortunately living in a, a rural area my internet connection probably isn't strong enough and or reliable enough to do it without causing sort of technical problems and I think everyone would just get fed up with it you know I would have like major major lag if it would support it at all so it's kind of something that you know I'm kind of missing out on in that sense and it's a shame because it's something I'd really like to do and I know a lot of you guys would really enjoy it as well because you do like the sort of chatty aspect of things but it's just an unfortunate side effect there are so many nice things about staying where I stay but internet is not, not one of them and it's just a lot easier for me to to film my videos you know to pre-record them and put them out and that way I'm not inflicting my rural technical issues on all of you so it's a bit of a shame but it's just one of those things I'm afraid if that ever changes you guys will be the first people to know I'll be like jumping on to make an announcement video I've got better internet let's do this <laughs> but yeah let's see you you have to take the rough with the smooth and generally speaking um you know staying where I stay I think I'm very lucky and there's lots of upsides to it I and mean, we still, obviously, we still have functioning internet, otherwise you um, you guys wouldn't see this. But, I mean, we have stayed in places where the, the, the internet connection has been non-existent or it has been too slow to, to use other than for basic, basic, like, text browsing. And that is really, really difficult. That's hard to live with. But... It's, I think it's getting better, but we are always, the, the rural community, when I say we, I mean the rural community, we are always the last in terms of technology to get everything. There are, apparently, I was reading up on this, apparently in Scotland, 93% of the country has access to a 4G mobile phone signal. And have had for at least a couple of years we only started to get a 4g signal about six months ago and even then it's patchy and it depends where you are on the farm whether or not you'll definitely get it and the internet situation is no different we uh, our road end for our farm actually joins up with a trunk road you know like a main arterial road that joins up a couple of the towns in the area and it's a busy road and we do not have access to fibre optic it's just not there 
and I'm like, well, you know, what, what chance have other people in rural areas got if we are, you know, relatively central and we have the access to that road, you know, without having to drive too far. I mean, it's not like we're like 40 miles from the road end. Then people that stay further out, and again, I have been one of those people, you know, how long are they going to have to live in the dark ages? Because it's, it's not just having access to it for yourself. It's the fact that technology moves really quickly and the demands that are placed on your internet connection are always growing you know just now i mean 4k video is still quite sort of new and it's not mainstream and it's not a default file for like a file format for you to upload videos for example but even you know when that comes there will be a lot of people in rural areas who, who just don't have the internet capacity to support that kind of streaming and it's 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 going to cause problems. I mean, it's it's always caused problems, but you just sort of like you just kind of like grin and bear it. But it's just one of those things that really annoys me because I pay for, I pay for an internet service with the the main pr provider in the UK, which is BT, and BT are the only people. I have no option. I have to go with BT because they're the only people that will p provide a line in our area. Now, I'm paying exactly the same amount as people who live in a built-up area and my internet connection is unreliable. It frequently cuts out, it cuts off and uh, my speeds are generally about three or four times slower than people in a built-up area and I'm paying exactly the same money. So it does get quite, you know, it kind of gets irritating. And then when something goes really wrong and you've had no internet for like two days, when you phone up BT, they kind of like shrug, shrug it off as if to say, well, oh, it's because you live in a rural area. And it, it does get quite annoying, especially when you say to people, well, you know, we are paying the same as these other people. They're getting a more reliable service and they, you know, and they are they're getting faster speeds all the time and knock something off my bill and they're like nope so that that's like a bugbear for me bugbear <laughs> funny uh and it's something that you've just got to kind of learn to live with it's the same as um council tax rates that's another i don't even want to start on that but <laughs> yeah just let, let's let's not go there i don't want this to turn into a ranty video so yes, staying in a rural area it has its definite advantages, but it has its disadvantages as well. But it's all part and parcel and, you know, you, you do get used to it. If you come from living in a built-up area and you all of a sudden move to, the, to the, the countryside, it can be a bit of a sort of culture shock. And there have been many, many people um, that have come to work on farms as employees. I missed a set of eyeballs somewhere. Yeah, I was up here. Who have come to work on farms because it's good money or because they wanted a change, whatever. But they they come and they, they move out because quite a lot of farming jobs provide a, a property, you know, like accommodation to live in. And it's because it's kind of like a 24 hour job. You kind of have to be here. And uh, we have had a lot of people and I have seen a lot of people who have only stuck it out for a matter of months and it's nothing to do with the job they've really enjoyed the job but their families have absolutely hated moving from you know a, a more sort of populated area into basically the middle of nowhere it happens so often and the thing that i always say is that farming is not a job it's a lifestyle it's a way of life and it can be very difficult to adjust to i'm sure i've mentioned before i have a friend who shall remain nameless but she's absolutely horrified that I live where I live and she doesn't, she can't comprehend how I could possibly voluntarily want to live in the countryside because she is, like, she's she's proper, like, socialite type. She's out in bars every night, not necessarily drinking, but to socialise, you know, she's always out for dinner and she likes to go to the gym and she has, like, people she meets up with at the gym and works out with them and all this kind of stuff and I, she wouldn't cope with the sort of the more solitary aspects of it and I think she would you know it would drive her nuts and it's say it's so common but uh, the the things that she does uh, they just uh, they just don't appeal to me I'm not interested and um, it was kind of like a, it, it's just a different lifestyle. And I've had this conversation with my best friend who, who lives in a town. She actually stays in the middle of a town. 
and she, her words were it's like you you guys that stay out on a farm you live a much more frugal lifestyle and it's not intentional it's just because we don't things aren't convenient for us we we can't nip around the corner to cost our starbucks and go and get a coffee because we have to drive several miles each way to do that so you just don't do it whereas you know they're they're more likely to go and get a takeout for for lunch or you know for dinner because it's convenient and it's accessible it's right there so i, I th and she's absolutely right we just don't do stuff like that our money goes elsewhere but my other close friend who um he again city boy total city boy and he's he was kind of thinking about moving to london and he i met up with him we only catch up like every sort of maybe six months or so and you know when we do we go through the whole you know like so what's happened since the last time i saw you and he said to me he says uh, i'm absolutely skint I'm, I'm you know i've got no money and I kind of looked at him and now this friend of mine does very well for himself. He is not short of a bob or two. You know, he's he's done really well with his job. He's been quite successful and he is not what I would call someone who's struggling for cash. And he said to me, he's like, I'm, I'm skint. And the first thing I did was laugh. I was like, how can you possibly be skint? And he started rhyming off all this stuff. And I was just like, you need to come and live with us for like, two weeks and you know learn to budget he's basically blowing all his cash on going out to gigs taking women out on dates and going on holidays uh, i mean he's away it's like mini breaks he takes but he's away like three four times a year and i said to him i said that's why you've got no money <laughs> because you're just you know you're just like spending it spending and there's nothing wrong with that but if you're struggling to cover bills and stuff then obviously the you know the the the, the playtime has to be cut down yeah you have to kind of calm that down a little bit but it was just this sort of disbelief i was like i can't believe someone who who has done well for themselves financially is sitting here in front of me telling me that they're skint and i'm like well stop buying coffee three times a day you know like five pound a pop you know, take coffee to work with you. You can get really nice coffee from various places, like from various stores. It's not like you're, you know, you're never going to get nice coffee. But just take it with you. Don't go and buy one. And the best of it is he doesn't even have a car because he stays in the city. He sold his car years ago because you have to pay to park all the time, right? So it's not even as if he was running costs for a vehicle. And I just find that absolutely hilarious. I really do. But uh, I don't know whether he's calmed down that he's, he's spent it or not. But that was just one of those conversations. I was like, it really shows up the differences between, you know, the, the sort of lifestyle choices that you make. But generally as farmers, I mean, I think as well as when you stay out in the country, not just farmers, but for anybody else that stays in a rural area, you you have to plan things quite carefully. Like, because you've got to make that trip to go into the nearest town or city or whatever and it's not always necessarily close by depending on your location but I'll maybe try and get out to the town once a week and before I go I will like sort of take stock of everything that's in the house and see if there's anything else that I could pick up when I'm out. And it's to save me multiple trips, because if I make those multiple trips, before you know where you are, you've spent a fortune on fuel, just sort of zipping back and forth. So that's one of the advantages of being a really organised person, and it really helps with stuff like that. The other thing that I do as well is I get my food shopping, you know, like my grocery shopping delivered. I order it online. It is cheaper for me to do that than it is to drive into the city and go and pick it up myself and go shopping uh not only that i hate shopping anyway so that suits me fine but it's obviously it's reducing a carbon footprint as well which is always a nice sort of bonus um but i can't for the delivery charge oh the sun's come out my goodness i didn't expect that to happen it's really really stormy here today it's really windy and it was like the middle of the night earlier. Right, let's see if that's a little bit better. The the sort of speckles that you can see wavering across the screen. It's um it's the leaves on the tree outside the cave window. Obviously, it's uh, it's in full bloom now, and the sun's just sort of peeking through. But it's the wind that's blowing the branches about. Anyway, hopefully that's not too annoying. It doesn't look too bad on the monitor. We'll try that for a little while. Um, 
yeah, so it's more, it's more cost effective. I don't have to spend the time physically going around the supermarket. And when you're self-employed, time is money. So that's something that's really important. But someone said to me once, like, oh, you're so lazy getting your, your shopping delivered online. And when I explained to them why, they, they sort of went, oh, well, I, I suppose that makes sense then. And I'm like, yeah, it really does make sense. Why would I not do that? So there's all these things, but I've found it with, I don't know if anybody else has found this as well. If you order your shopping online, I do find that my shopping bills are a lot less than if I go to the supermarket because I don't pick up lots of extra things and just chuck them in the trolley. I, I just get what I need, you know, what's on the shopping list. Um, that's something that I, I've kind of noticed it slowly over time, but that's, that's another definite advantage to to doing your shopping online but yeah I was quite sort of I don't know I wasn't offended or anything but they're just like oh god you're so lazy and I'm like no I'm not I'm actually not lazy <laughs> I just don't like shopping and I'm not there's no point in driving like all those miles to to a half decent supermarket when I can pay one pound fifty and someone will deliver it to my door within a one hour time slot like why why would I not do that so that is, it's very interesting, the different perspectives and the different points of view. But uh, I, I do find, though, b before I lived here, when I used to travel up this way to visit my best friend, I always found that I used to spend a fortune when I was here. And it was just because, again, living in the town, we were always going out. And that's what we did. And uh, that soon mounts up. And it's really easy. And I'm not talking about being extravagant or anything. Even just, you know, picking up some lunch or whatever, or, you know, going to going to the cinema. There, There's a classic one. Going to the cinema is so expensive now. Um, but because the cinema's right there, you, you know, you maybe go, I don't know, like once every two weeks or once a month or something. We don't do that because our cinema is miles away, miles and miles and miles away. Uh, you know, we go like once every six months. <laughs> So there's there's definitely, you know, it's, it's a different set of priorities, but I, I do know a lot of people that, that don't come from rural roots struggle with it. They do find it difficult, and I can understand that. I, uh, when, when I stayed in, for the very short period of time, I stayed in um, a built-up area. Again, this was when we'd just moved back from England, and Mr. Jem hadn't decided what he was doing yet in terms of work and stuff. So we were staying in one of my mum and dad's properties and it was in a, you know, in like a housing estate kind of thing. You know, it was like a, sub, like a, a suburban area. And I haven't lived in a suburban area for a long, 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 long time. And it was a total culture shock and I hated it to begin with. I really hated it. I hated the fact that I had a neighbour through the wall. You know, it was like a semi-detached house. So it's two houses joined together. And I could hear things through the wall. I didn't like the fact that people could see into my back garden. I didn't like the fact that every time I stepped out the front door, the entire street knew that I was leaving my house. You know, all those kind of things because it's just stuff I'm not used to. The The worst one, though, and it's the funniest one as well, was not being able to get to sleep at night. And it was because of the street lights. There was a street light right outside my bedroom window. And... When you when you live in a rural area, there there's no streetlights anywhere, like anywhere. So during the night, it is pitch black. Like you can't see your hand in front of your face, and all of a sudden, I, like my 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 bedroom was like it was just like Blackpool illuminations. Everything was so bright. I was like, this is like the middle of the day. How am I supposed to sleep? And it took me about three months to get over that and get used to it. And like all the little noises as well. And they're just normal noises like cars passing by outside. You know, people like coming into the street to, to go home or whatever. Not used to any of that. And to begin with, the dogs barked at every little noise because they're not used to it either. And I was having to sort of say to them, it's okay, it's okay. And if someone walked past the, the front of the house, you know, on the pavement, they would bark as well. And it was just like, oh my goodness, this is horrendous. But I did get used to it and there, there, there were some really nice things about it too. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just different. So if you're thinking about um, relocating to the country, I would give it some serious thought. 
the uh, the worst thing about it is see if you want to go to the pub <laughs> It's a military operation because taxis are very expensive. So sometimes you can maybe organise someone to, you know, like give you a lift. But yeah, it's, it's just, that's not cool. <laughs> that's the worst bit. And any time that we've moved, Mr. Gem and I have moved a lot. Any time we've been ready to make a move, the first thing we do is go to Google Maps and find out where the nearest pub is. <laughs> And it's really funny because we actually don't go out to the pub a lot, but that when we do go, it's a, we appreciate it and it's important. God, I'm making us sound like raging alcoholics. Righty-ho, there we go. What do we think to that, everyone? I am really happy with this. I am super duper happy with this. It's uh, I like the fact that I've managed to keep it quite delicate. You know, it's not sort of in your face overpowering and it doesn't have that sort of childish look to it, even though we've got this lovely sort of rainbow gradient right what I want to do really quickly now is I'm just going to sort of scan round and I'm going to fill in any gaps with our background colours so what I've done for the background colours is I have taken the lightest shade from the previous ring so in the green section I have used a yellow colour and in the aqua section, I have used a green colour and so on and so forth. So you're like one step behind. And all I've done is use the lightest shades. So for, we, we have filled in most of this sort of inner ring already. But I'm just going to take the, it was spring green was the green that I saved for the background, which is PC1913, uh, nine, sorry, not 193. Why are you not focusing? Come on. Yeah, spring green 913 and all I want to do is work my way around this aqua section and just see if there's any gaps in the background. I can actually see I've missed a butterfly's body there which isn't great. I'll just pop that in. Missed bits. Yeah, so if I just sort of track my way around and look to see if there's any of the background showing through and then I can just use my my spring green pencil and it's just a very light tickle we're not doing anything fancy with it but I do think I got most of it there's a tiny little spot in here as well this side's quite dense there isn't much sort of background showing through on this side yeah I think we're good okay so now moving on to the blue ring I have got the light green and I'm just going to do the same thing again. Really, really light layer. Not, you know, I'm hardly pressing down at all. Just enough so that we can see that there is colour there and that, you know, the page isn't white. There's a little bit in here. If they're, if they're on a sort of, uh, you know, like a crossover part, don't worry too much about it. I, keep, I know I keep saying this, I sound like a broken record, but there's so much going on in this page. It's not... The, it's just that the white of the paper sticks out, you know, it stands out now, so we just want that to sort of disappear. And we only want the white of the paper showing where we want it to show. So, this isn't an exact science, and most of you will know by now, when, I, when it comes to colouring, everything I do is not an exact science. It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be relaxing, so, you know, you're not going to get hit up about things, there's no point. Just trying to get these little spaces in here. There's quite a lot in behind here. That's kind of going into the purple, so I'm going to leave that part. There's a bit in there as well. Just pop that in there. This is kind of uh, this is kind of dodgy, <laughs> dodgy ground here because this is almost into purple as well. Um, yeah, I'll just put that in there. See what else I've got going on around here. So this this band of blue is very thin in here actually. There's not a lot of blue going on at all. With all these gaps. I don't know if I should do inside the skull's eye sockets. I think I will. I'm gonna do his mouth as well. Yeah. Oh that's funny you didn't see that this little guy here. So we've got these parts in here as well. I'm just going to sort of smooth over that. I'll just pop that in there. Again, we've got these sort of shadows inside the door of the castle, but I quite like them popping out, so I think I'm going to leave them. You could colour those in, though. There's nothing stopping you doing that if that's uh, 
something that tickles your fancy. Got these sections in here as well. That's me almost back to the beginning. Okay, so now that I'm done with that one, I'm just going to move on. So into the purple section, I have my Cerulean Blue, which is PC103. And just the same thing again, very methodically. And there's quite a lot of gaps around here and they're just sort of like lined areas, like hatched areas. And I just want to make sure, so there's quite a lot in here as well. That's actually in the blue section, so we'll make that really dark. I've actually missed a bit there. Ever look on some professional guys, you know me. <laughs> There's a little bit in there as well. I don't know if you heard that click there, that was my collarbone. That didn't feel good. I have noticed our, <clears throat> excuse me, the last few days our weather has been really, really damp. And there are various parts of my body that begin to ache when it gets damp and it's because of <laughs> various farming injuries and whatnot. My I have a I have a dodgy knee. Um it's I didn't get it running. That's I hate it when people say that you shouldn't run, it's bad for your knees. Uh it was a sheep related incident and it's the first thing to see if there's any sign of sort of damp or anything. Now, I had this conversation with someone after I told my story about my hand. And I'm really sorry, I can't remember who you are, like I can't remember your screen name, but the, the conversation was surrounding you falling out of bunk beds. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so there's like, when it's really, really damp or there's bad weather coming quite often, if any of you have broken a bone, it sometimes happens after you've broken something, you, you feel like really stiff and heavy in that part of your body. And I've got so many of those, but my knee especially, but I've got to watch that knee anyway. Um, I've got to be very careful with it. But my knee has been clicking like crazy. And normally it clicks anyway, but nine times out of ten it doesn't hurt. And it's yesterday and today it's been clicking away like crazy and it's sore when it clicks. So that's not great. It doesn't that's not good for running either. Um when my knee starts to play up, I don't run. It's I've got to be, you know, I'd rather protect my knee and be able to walk about than be an idiot and try and go out running and then hurt myself. Um but my knee's been clicking like crazy and various say, other parts of my body my, my left foot as well which is the opposite foot to the sore knee if that makes any sense um uh, i had a bull stand on that once and that's been really really stiff as well these last couple of days so i'm assuming it's just the weather but all these old war wounds telling you I, i've actually <laughs> i have no idea how i'm still in one piece to be honest but I say nothing. Nothing ails me in that sense. I'm. A, I'm. I'm a. Well, reasonably, I'm a fit and healthy person. But I've just got a lot of old, old injuries. And when you're only in your mid thirties, that's not great. <laughs> right there we go. I was just having a quick scan round, but I think we are done. Okay, the last thing we want to do is put our name in, which I am super excited about. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to kind of emulate the the font style. I can take this off now. We're finished with this. Hooray. The font style that is used through throughout the book. And uh, I'm just going to try my best to emulate that on here. Now, I'm really lucky because I've got a really short name. <laughs> But what, if you look closely, there are certain letters and it's usually like the capital letters are in a slightly different font to the rest of them. Now, to give you an example there, the, the capital G, which is obviously I, what I would use, is uh, a lot thinner. And here we have this sort of thick sort of courier type font for the lowercase. So I'm just going to try and pick through. Now, there are lots of areas in the book where you know, these this lettering has been used. So you should be able to pick out most of the letters in your name unless you have a lot of Zs or, you know, the sort of lesser known ones. But you can get an idea of roughly, you know, what you can do. So this G, that's pretty, pretty standard fare. And I'm just going to pop this in in pencil. This is fairly round and then this comes across like this. And it's a little bit thicker in there. And I'm just using this as a guideline for myself. 
if any of you have watched the video I did on drawing insects in your colouring books, this is the same sort of thing. I honestly, I swear by using pencil for everything because you can erase it all day long. And M's are always a problem. M's always a complicated letter. <laughs> Here's one here. So we've got a tail. And then it comes down like this. And it's quite rounded there. And then we've got these sort of little feet. Put them in as triangles just now. And that's quite a wobbly sort of, you know, like a typewritery style. The E's do vary, the E's looks, see the E doesn't look that thick, but it is actually quite thick. So maybe go for that. And the G is a lot thinner than the other letters. So let's just have a go. What have I got here? I'm going to use a Pigma Micron 05, which is a 0 0.45 millimeter line width. That's the really confusing thing about Pigma Microns. This number does not correlate to the nib size. It's just their numbering system. So yeah, 0 0.45, because you would think that that would be a 0 0.5 line width, but they just do it to confuse you. So we just want to take our time here, and what I normally do is I, I put in what I call the skeleton of the letter first. So just the just the, the line, the way you would draw, it draw, write normally. And then you can sort of build it up from there. You know, you can thicken these lines up. So I'm just going to do that. Like they teach you when you're little how to how to form your letters. <laughs> okay, so when I look again at these fonts, everything's quite rounded. There's no sort of sharp edges on any of the letters, apart from this this G part here, the outer parts. The first thing we do is thicken that up. And then just sort of round that off. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just think it's nice if you can get the, your your name looking in either a very similar style to what's in the book or go for something completely different. Like my own handwriting would look really good if I took my time with it. I have a very cursive, uh, you know, sort of script type handwriting, like my normal handwriting. Um, and that looks quite good if you, you want to take your time and make it deliberately stand out from everything else. Um, but I find it very difficult to write slowly and neatly in my, in my own handwriting now. I actually have two different sets of handwriting. The This sort of thing here, that's just scribbles, but down here you can see see these tiny little capitals that I use. That's my scientific shorthand. Um, when I was doing my degree, uh, taking lab notes and things, they have to be legible or else you can't remember what you've done. And... I was always told if you want to keep your handwriting neat, keep it small. So the other advantage to that was being able to cram a lot of information onto like a tiny sheet of paper. Now, when you're running about a lab and you've got bacteria and um, corrosive substances and stuff, that's really helpful. So you're not like waggling about millions of sheets of paper. So I use that, those, those tiny um, capital letters. That's just like my note-taking handwriting. And then I've, my, I've got my like my normal script of handwriting, which everyone tells me is really nice and I don't think it is. I think it's very difficult to read. Uh, anyway, off on a tangent again. Right, uh, where are we at? Oh, right, okay, we're on to our M now. So this needs to be quite thick. So this is kind of like... And I don't need to be careful with this because, as I say, it looks as if it's like typewriter style. You know, the, the lines are quite wobbly. There's no sort of crisp, clean lines when it comes to forming these shapes, which is, there's something kind of nice about that, I think. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm just gonna let that dry for a wee while and then what I will do is I will take my eraser and just rub out the, the sort of wayward pencil lines. And that is it, everyone. That is our finished nameplate page in Imagimorphia by the beautiful Kirby Rosanna's. I hope you have enjoyed this. I've had great fun. 
always good for a giggle. And uh, as I said, the next one's going to be Hannah Carlson's Summer Nights. So if you own that book and you want to see what I'm going to do in it, then feel free to come and join me for the next one, which will be in probably a week or so. I will be doing quite a few of them as bonus videos, as I said as well. So they will be out with the normal schedule. Anyway, I am going to go and drink my tea before it gets cold now. I will leave um, some videos in the end card for you. If you liked the, the sort of feel of this video and you want to watch some more, you can check those out. If you like this, guys, please give me a thumbs up and we shall see you back in the cave really soon for another video. Have a good day, everyone. Bye for now.